Look what I just did in this one month. He didn't even know he was doing it. So he like, I started okay. putting numbers in Excel to see what was going on. And then he showed me like, <laughs> I have all these assignments. They're closing this week and it's a hundred thousand dollars. One month. I'm like, oh I gotta, God. I gotta think about this thing. He's like, <laughs> quit right now. I'm right like, now. quit. So, You're listening to The Azria Show. If you're looking for quality real estate investing information that you can trust, you've found it. Stay tuned and join the tens of thousands of members that have already benefited from Azria, your home for education, market information, support, and networking opportunities that will advance your real estate investing career. Hello, 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 Arizona. Welcome to The Azria Show. On today, we are here with Ramon Martinez and Rodrigo Martinez. Martinez. So today we're going to be talking about wholesaling, guys. And we know that there's quite a few people out here in the Valley that really want to get started as a real estate investor. And the one thing that they always hear is, one, go to your local RIA. So you're here with us right now. And then two is get started with wholesaling if you don't have any money. So if you're listening, you don't have any money, you don't have any credit, but you want to get into real estate investing, you have four proven wholesalers here with myself, Marcus Maloney, my uh, co-host. Mike Del Pre. And we have Ramon and Rodrigo here. So let's get ready. Let's rock and roll, guys. Strap on your seat belts. We're going to talk a lot about real estate investing. So after this show, we're going to leave some quality information for you to get some more information about their event. So Ramon, Rodrigo, welcome to the show, guys. How are you? Hey, what's going on, man? Thank you guys uh, for having us, first of all, man. So definitely an honor having to be here. Great, great, great. So Mike, starting out, I know you started as a wholesaler. I started as a wholesaler. These guys are wholesalers. So to, to kind of squelch you know what people always say do you have to have a license in order to be a real estate investor i haven't used my license like in two years <laughs> i think I, I was looking at my numbers just to see what because he always checks his numbers oh i'm on this number of deals with my license i think it was like a zero right like the, all that <laughs> or something. well to be fair i'm using the hell out of my license thanks <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> having a license will play and affect, so he doesn't have to use it. It helps. But it helps. It helps. I mean, as long as one person that works with you has one, because you know if you're taking deals down or whatever, I mean, you always need to have somebody to put them on the MLS, save yourself some money. You know, that's yeah. good. So, so I know because I know a little bit about your background. So I know you guys have a lot of things going on. So, so before we jump into all the different things you do, let's how'd you get into it? Like, how'd you get started? Tell us, tell them our members about, you know, how you guys found real estate. So it's a very, very interesting situation. As you know, my, the first training I ever bought, like the first true training that I got was Mike's, Mike's <laughs> training. And, you know, I, was, right. I used to, I, I bought that thing and then it gave me access to the Facebook private group that he had. I was looking at all the videos he was doing. Oh my God, this strategy is great. Oh my God, this is great. I was just soaking <laughs> it all in. And it took me a while to, to get the courage, you know, to start jumping into things. And oddly enough, the first deal that we did was with Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it yeah, crazy how you attract yep. with your brain the power of the universe? Mike shows up with this We Love Houses hat. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the dude from the course. <laughs> What? <laughs> he does exist yeah. Yeah. And, and he and like he was the guy through another guy but he was the one that had it also we were involved and we had the buyer but mm -hmm. we're it was just a, a weird situation he was looking at us like what are these guys okay in the head i remember, uh -huh. I remember, I still remember his look he was looking at me and well like, dude and then i was like who's gonna buy this thing i didn't actually buy it this. was a horrible but at the end of the walkthrough when he First of all, he met us and he's like, dude, don't talk to anyone. Don't say nothing to no one. I was like, sure. Yeah. We walked in. It was a tiny house. I think like 500 square feet or something. And yeah. we walked out and we're like, okay, there, man. Thanks. Cool. And then, okay. And then before we left, I looked at him and I was like, hey, bro, just so you know, I buy your course. <laughs> I have to say it. So the good, thing, the good thing about it is, is that you guys went and you got the education. Yeah. And then not only did you get the education, but you started to take action. Yeah. Because yeah. that's one of the things that a lot of newbies do is they get the education and they want to sit in the classroom and absorb all of this education, but they never put it into action. I was ready to absorb some dollar bills, man. I was, you know, like, okay, so you do this, you do that. Okay, I'll be right back. So, right. <laughs> so, so let's look at this. So did you guys 
You guys flipped that one, though. Flipped. You guys well, took that one down. Not that one. Yeah, it was, we had the, right, the little corner, had the right corner one. The corner it. one. So for that yeah. one, the guy was that the one? The, I think we did chickens. two deals. Oh, yeah, my chickens. God. Yeah, because it was two. Yeah. That's the one with the chickens. Yeah, the chickens, the addition in the back. Yeah, yeah. all that stuff down. You guys did great on that that one worked out, and it was it was thinking of it now. Like it was worth so much with, well, with the housing for, market. For is. us, that house had all the scenarios that that we, we couldn't get enough of scenarios of, of things to look out for. Yeah, which crazy the, guy. We look yeah, at the, the, the fencing corner being the, the situation it is. So we learned so much of what to do for the right. next flip. So I think we made a little bit of cash on it. Yeah, we made okay. a little bit of cash, but but it's it's about throwing yourself into it. That's mm -hmm. the thing. You know, we we went in there, we saw, we threw ourselves into it. You did, and you know. Next thing you know, we did another one somewhere else, and the same thing. We threw ourselves into okay. it. That was our our first fix and flip that we did. That our our parents also helped us on. Okay. So 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 going there, Rodrigo, which is very important because I know that's a question that people are going to say. Okay, you're getting started. Where did you get the capital to fund this deal? This first one. So was it hard money? Was it family, private money? Kind of what was it? So for me, I had some money saved up. Uh, okay. From I've been a real estate agent for six years already. Had the license and everything, so I started saving some money. Well, he wholesaled a piece of land by accident. I oh, wholesaled wow. one by accident. I had a you didn't even know that was also. I had a buyer for it. <laughs> we have the contracts. We had all the stuff there. Well, he was buying it for himself originally. You were thinking, I'm going to buy this piece of land up on the mountain. I'm going to build a mansion somewhere. Yeah. The okay. thing is that I had the buyer for it. The buyer bailed out, and I said, Well, I'm going to keep it. I want it for myself. I'm going to mm -hmm. build something eventually. And then Ramon saw me. No, no, it's not a good idea. Blah blah. But before I was, I was able to close on it, some guy shows up and says, hey, is that law that you sent me a while back still available? And I said, well, let me check. And so what happened there, I, I said, oh, man, I'll let it go for this much. So I think I put 30000 on top of the lot because yeah. I didn't want to sell it. I told everyone, I'm not going to sell it. We'll put 30000 or something. If he I'll takes it. For <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, Always like, asking like I said, yes. I'm like, sure. oh, man. Yeah. I'm so depressed. <laughs> Should ask for $40,000. <laughs> yeah, I could ask for more, but so that was my first wholesale. I didn't even know it was a wholesale deal. I, I just we didn't even know how to change our name into the new guy's name, and so Tyler okay. was helping us no idea. with the whole process because the thing kept getting extended, extended, extended with the city, and it kept getting extended. In a blank so at the end of the day, ended up switching, and he's like, somehow now he's buying it, but I'm getting the money out of it, and those are the first true wholesale deal. We so did. it sparked some interest. Yeah, it sparked interest. Yeah. you can buy some stuff and make money. We use that money. For that flip. Okay, okay. so yeah. so not going to that. Yeah. So so you said you, I know. So you so Mike, not to cut you off oh, okay. because I want to make sure we make sure that everybody understand that this is key. You guys did this by accident. By accident. But yeah. just by taking the action, just by okay. saying this is what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, you didn't know a title company. You didn't have all your eyes dotted and T's crossed, but you took the action and voila, yeah. things well, happen. Well, how I found found Mike was. The titles that you're going to assign it over to, and I went into Google and Facebook and started putting these words that they were talking about: assign and wholesale, and mm -hmm. and, and your picture popped up with your oh, stuff. Oh, really? I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, what is this? And then I started going into it. I'm like, dude, and I told you, I think this is what we did, bro. I'm like, look, this is what you're talking about. <laughs> right? Send me like the podcasts and audios like that uh -huh. you're doing. Like, hey, you got to listen to this. But at the time, I'm like, oh, Ramon's crazy. I, I was thinking like wholesale, and I didn't believe in it because I was doing traditional real estate. Yeah, yeah, realtor. And so in my mind, I'm like, well, I'll just go along with it and see what happens. That's so at the end, it, we were just it, it worked out. It. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, man. I didn't know that. So that's, <laughs> so that's, so that's our first wholesale experience. Okay. Now, the way that we, we got into the investing world was actually crazy. Like, I, I had a real job. I like to call a real job at W2, where I used to fly all over the country, sales meetings and all that. I used to work for a company out of England, Manchester. And I was doing that for a couple of years. So I always worked for corporate America. You know, I worked for all the banks. I used, I, even that got me a job in England working for another company. And, you know, I was there for two years. was doing great. Managed to sign up a lot of the world's largest retailers. You know, Victoria's Secret were my clients at the finance levels. Like uh, Starbucks were my clients, Gap, Jack, mm -hmm. you name it. Like, I signed all of like the big levels to try to help them optimize card payments and fees. Okay. And, and so two years in, I you know I, I was starting to not feel it anymore. And I was like, okay, I've traveled. I'm traveling too much. I'm away from my kids. And that's what was starting to develop in my personality. You know, the side of a hotel room may be depressed. Like we go into a hotel room, I feel horrible. And mm -hmm. there's a new guy that came in. I was like, hey man, I don't think I want to be here much longer. I can't. Take all this traveling away from my family and then word got back to management this guy's not happy anymore like you can see uh, it, but, hey man i don't think you know you're gonna be right. keep doing this 
And so they just let me go that, that same day, longest flight ever. When I got home, I'm like, okay, well, how do I pay for the bills? Yeah. I don't even know if these guys are going to pay me for my next check. Or I had recently bought an English. I got a good deal. And I'm like, oh, 1200 bucks. These things are like five grand. I got one and, you know, I got home and I'm like, I guess I'm going to have to sell it. The kids were devastated. They're like, they're yeah, crying. selling a family Their member. puppy was bleeding. <laughs> I go, like the worst dad in the world. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to hell. Like I officially have made the list of worst thing you do. <laughs> yeah. For your kids, like I'm a traumatized. So I, I, I'm like, dude, uh, maybe I can sell it for more. And I got for 1200 I'll put it for like 1500 on Chrysler. Maybe somebody picks it up. Five minutes, boom, call. I want it on my way. I was like, oh my God, I just uh -huh. have to make 200 bucks. <laughs> okay, cool. Here you go. All of a sudden, I had $300 extra. I called the guy that stole it to me. And I was like, hey, man, do you have any more? Do you have like one more for my, one of my family members? Yeah, I got one more. He was just there for the weekend. He brought a ton. I don't know what the hell he does. And so he got me one more. I put it on Craigslist. 30 minutes. It was sold. Another three. I called him again. Hey, man, do you, I saw you have like three more. Can I just buy those three? So I took my two, my money from the two, buy yep. the other three, and I sold them that same weekend. All five were sold, and I made like two grand. Nice. And I was like, oh, my God, like I could do that. Hey, man, can you give me more of these? I can help you move here with people. You know, my business side. Yeah, yeah. Like, now I'm going to be able to hang out with puppies all day. <laughs> make a little bit of cash, like two grand a weekend. That's way more than right. I'll make on my other job for right. two weeks. Or, yeah. you know? So long story short, I did that for two years. Oh, wow. Straight. Wow. Straight. How's this guy getting all these dogs? Well, that's the thing, man. Like, after a while, I realized that he wasn't a breeder. He was just, like, smuggling him. <laughs> oh, wow. He was a reseller. He was, he was a, a reseller. Uh, okay. He okay. Was, he wasn't... He was direct to the contract holder, Ramon's but he was assigning them to me, and I was assigning them. <laughs> you were not direct to seller. I was not direct to seller. Yeah. Right. So he, but yeah, he, he knew all the breeders in Mexico, so he was bringing them in, bringing them to me. Cool. But after a while, after two years, and I thought everything was great. Now I became one of the biggest dog sellers in Arizona. Like, let me tell you what levels: Phoenix Suns players. Mm -hmm. I was selling to them. The Cardinals, the cheerleaders, the doctors, the lawyers. Wow. Okay. Wow. I was, politicians flipping I, dogs. I was flipping dogs real estate investors, real estate investors were my huge target i was targeting realtors in my promotion <laughs> uh, these okay. guys make big commissions <laughs> and some of you watching now hey yeah. tina um, <laughs> but you know after two years i landed on tv and not in a good way mm. one oh, of the dogs wow. i sold got sick and i got a call from one of the big channels hey man i heard you sold this dog to these people it got sick it's about to die on them they're upset what are you gonna do make it better i'm like I didn't, I didn't give it to you sick. You guys, right. you guys did it. Like, it's been a month. Like, you guys probably took it to the park and gave it something. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so as long as you're sure, I'm like, listen, this is what I'm going to do, man. Because I want to make it better. You know? Like, I've never had this happen before. Yeah. But I was already, TV was on me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, here, dude, here's their money back. They can keep it. Like, I don't even want right. to keep it. Sorry you went through that. All right. Then it happened again. Mm -hmm. I guess that litter was, was sick. Bad. Or yeah. maybe something happened with it. Nah. And so another channel came at me. Hey. <laughs> this person saying this. So it happened to me twice in the same week. Two channels were like, okay, well, that's, I got to yeah. get out. Rodrigo had just become a realtor. I'm like, hey, man, I need to do something else. He's like, become a real estate agent, bro. Like, you made it selling dogs. Like, how the hell? <laughs> You're right. You can do <laughs> You survived for two years selling I, dogs, I, man. I had, a, I think I had two years already been a realtor. Yep, mm -hmm. you could do it. So the reason I became a realtor is because this guy heard me complain at my job. Hey, I don't like this, you know, this mm -hmm. whole life. I was an architect. Nine five. Designing. But I don't know. I was going through some, some heartbreak problems. And he said, this is what made it for me. Let's go to China. Like, for my birthday. I said, no, you're crazy. But I said, okay, cool. Let's just do it. I mm -hmm. didn't think about it. I went to China. The exposure is something amazing and huge, like China brought me back to my job again on a Monday to my little cubicle. I felt depressed. I'm like, dopamine, this, is, this dopamine, isn't what I dopamine. want. Yeah. I felt that dopamine, you know, of going to China. I always like those, that kind of stuff. And then I kept complaining to him for the next year. Hey, I don't like this. I don't like this. Then he said, why don't you get your realtor's license? My friend has it, blah, blah, blah. Let's go sign up, both of us, and then get our license in six months. And then he was working out of, out of England doing his, you know, mm -hmm. his uh, uh, flying and all that. So we both hung up. We both went online, signed up. I called him back. Hey, I just signed up. And then let's go. He's like, well, you know what? I didn't sign up yet. Mm -hmm. So you do it. And then let me know how that works. <laughs> I, told him, I told him, you leave me alone on this journey. Okay. He said, once you make some real money, come back and then I'll quit my job. So I know it's worth it. You know, yeah. yeah. So it's it's worth it. So cushy it was, job. The crazy yeah. part is that I made like 50 grand, like when I got my license that year. So I was so happy. I told him, hey, you can quit. He's like, you know what? I just got a raise. I'm like above like 120 a year mm -hmm. now. I was like, God, oh, you're never going to quit now. Yeah, so yeah. I was like frustrated because I wanted him out. Ah, we're going to partner, partner up. So I made $100,000 a following year being a, a buyer's agent, going crazy, showing oh, houses. Bet. 
I told this guy, hey, I made a hundred thousand. You're gonna kill it. Let's go. Be a realtor. He's like, no, I can't do it. Luckily, they fired him. <laughs> yeah. fired. So he was <laughs> telling me the story. Hey, man, I just got. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I was on the other side of the line, you know, in Phoenix. Yeah. Like happy. But the crazy part, like he was ready to take the licensing test again. And then he calls me up. Hey, you know what happened? He's like, what happened, man? You ready? He's like, no, I just sold a bulldog, made 300 bucks. <laughs> and I sold three other ones, five. So Woo! I just made two grand some bulldogs. I'm like, oh, man. Never <laughs> right. So uh, eventually, like it caught up to him with that whole stuff that he just said. <laughs> the yeah. So the TV he's, shows, he's, I would even drive with them to get these dogs. And I, I was so stressed. Yeah. So because it was like, I don't want to jeopardize my license. Yeah, right, right. Get, them, get the license, license. And then when that happened, it, I think it happened when my mom saw you on TV for that, right? You're on TV. You're on TV with these dogs. Like, no. What are you doing? And then so he's like, Lower okay, my face I'm going to try to get this license. And like he took it five times. Yeah, it took it like five times. Five, six times pass to pass it. Oh my and God. I kept paying for his, like, retaking it, retaking uh -huh. it. So I believe in it. I was like, yeah, just do it. So he finally passed his test. But the thing is, I wouldn't pass it by, like, one question? That's the worst <laughs> part, like, one question? Yeah. It was yeah. so frustrating every time I go, like, by one. Like, oh so, so that was his, his thing. So once he got his license, I'm a virus agent. So with him, he's not a virus agent. He doesn't like opening houses. Right, and right. So what happened, he's like, not this quick. is not for me. Maybe I'm a, I'm a listing agent, he said. He didn't like it at all. He'd have to deal with the seller, a lot of things. And that's when he was looking for something else. Gotcha. And then he he saw that I made made up with the with the land piece yeah. of land. I made like 30 grand. And he was like researching, Maybe how that. can I do that? So, I, so I wasn't a buyer's stuff. agent and I wasn't a seller's agent. Like on the buyer's side, I would tell him, no, there's no more houses. On the seller's <laughs> side, I'd be like, I would be yelling at buyers. Accept agents these offers. Because they would cancel on me, yeah. i get upset. So yeah. I wasn't both. I'm like, I don't, I don't like any of this. Like it's not mm -hmm. for me. But then I saw that he made 30 mm -hmm. on something weird. And that's when I started researching. Yep. What is this? Okay. So, so when was that roughly? Like what year? About three, yeah, three and a half years ago. Three, three and a half years ago. Well, we first met like about six months before. Six yeah. months before that. Okay. Six so, before, yeah. okay. so about three years ago. Yeah. So so you got a taste of the money. You sparked your interest. I saw his money. <laughs> what is this? So then you guys, we met, right? You did those two deals. Yep. And also, so tell us what happened then. So how'd you guys like, because now... It's a big difference from where you were. Yeah. So, so tell us how you how it started to snowball. So we, he believed that being a fix and flipper was the way to go. Okay. But he found out that he can just assign properties. Mm -hmm. Learned that word mm -hmm. assign, and he start using that word. Yeah. But for for those for those who don't know, what is what is assigning a property? Uh, assign property? means you're, you're purchasing a property, and then you might find another person to take your spot, so a, a buyer. So so you have it under contract first of all. Yeah. Right? Yep. You have, you're the you have an equitable right on the property. And then you're assigning your right to somebody else for a, okay. for yeah. a fee. For a fee. So you're saying you're kind of like a middleman, but you have it and you might close on it or you might give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But right now you have the baton. Okay. Yeah. So other, other than that, when, when uh, he wanted to do these fix and flips, I said, I'm all in. Let's try it out. It turns out he was, uh, he kept assigning properties on the side and I kept seeing it. And he said, well, I just want to keep assigning these properties. I don't want to be a realtor. We'll do the fix and flips. And then out of nowhere, I think he had a snowball effect. He one had like, month. He, in one month, he had a hundred thousand dollars in the pipeline for that month. Okay. When in January, every, I think it was. Yeah, and when every month he was just using his credit cards, like he was like negative, negative, everything. He was using the hell out of his credit cards, so he didn't really have much money other than to just study. Mm -hmm. So that month, he said, "Hey, come here." We had a, an office together at the mall. He said, "Come here." So we were two different things. He was one hundred percent realtor. realtor. I was trying to one hundred percent do this other thing. So and that month, I told him. And that month, here. he said, "Look, come here. You have to cancel your license right now. Stop being a realtor. <laughs> look, look at what I just did in this one month." He didn't even know he was doing it until he like. I started putting in. numbers in Excel to see what was going and on. And then he showed me like <laughs> I have all these assignments. They're closing this week, and it's a hundred thousand dollars in one month. I'm like, oh I gotta, God. I gotta think about this thing. He's like, <laughs> quit right now. I'm right like, now. Quit. So, so how were you at that time? How were you getting the deals? There were all referrals. A lot, a lot of them were referrals. Like, you know, like direct to seller or just like other wholesalers? Not direct to seller. I didn't, okay. I, I didn't know how to okay. like lock things up. So okay. you're co-hosting. Co -ho yeah, yeah. So okay. I would find somebody that would, you know, say, hey, do you have anybody for this? And I'd be, I'd be friends with the lender. Hey, do you have anybody for that? And just kind of becoming a middleman gotcha. for all these people and connections that I knew. Because I knew a lot of contractors. So you're building a, buy, a buyer's, buyer's list. Things. Buyer's list. Yeah. So I was already... So it was just like, here you go, here's that one, just kind of handing things off. But I wasn't really paying attention to what things were adding up to. And so I ran the numbers and I told him, come in, check this out. And it, it was like over 100000 So, so I, mean, I think uh, we 
we've experienced growth and we had to, you know, step up to the plate every time we saw that there's an opportunity. So for me, I could have just said, no, this is the way for me, blah, blah. So at mm-hmm. that point I want to have a, I want, I wanted to have a brokerage. I want to be the realtor, top number one, whatever. But then I saw an opportunity with him because I was wanting to work with him and, and make some money. But I said, okay, I have to change my mindset. I told him right now I'm brainwashed to be a realtor, hundred percent buyer's mm-hmm. agent. So I dedicated myself for the next three months to listen to all, all the other things that he was doing and just basically help him. And I okay. took him to a lot of masterminds. A lot took of me to a lot of wholesale mastermind events. And I told him, I'm not going to do one real estate transaction anymore because we have to figure this out. So let's see what's, what's happening over here. What's going on? <laughs> so, so, so okay. once you guys kind of figured it out, once you, once you got on board completely, Rodrigo, and you saw what Ramon was doing, what did you guys do after that? Because I'm trying to trying to paint a picture for the person that's getting started. Yeah. yeah. So so what happened for us? It was amazing because Ramon didn't have that much real estate experience. Like he didn't know title, the lenders. He he was learning everything just you know from the street. Go. You yeah. know, okay, what does title do? What's a hard money lender? But for me, I had the real estate experience of title. What another person does, the buyers, the sellers. So we started helping each other that way. I had a lot of knowledge in the traditional side. So he started getting his cold callers. He's like, I got to scale this thing up. Well, the thing is, at that point, like you said, it was cold wholesaling, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't, mm-hmm. And then in my mind, I was like, what if I, I'm not able to do it? Like, what if people don't send me things? What if right. I don't, like, I need to figure out how to do it myself. Like, how are these guys doing it? And I started asking questions like, oh, you sent text? Oh, cool. What are you using? Oh, you have, the first time somebody said the words VA, oh, I have a couple of VAs in my office. In my mind, what do you think I thought? A veteran. Veterans. <laughs> He's, he hires the veterans. Okay, where do I get veterans? We're all down at the hospital on seven. Right. I was looking for veterans. Like that whole weekend, my VAs, I have like three VAs, okay, the older gentlemen, they're probably in the army. So uh-huh. Veterans, where do I get veterans? It took me a couple of months to realize <laughs> that, that it was a virtual assistant or yeah. somebody just making calls or a cold yeah. caller. And I was like, with that mentality. But I knew that I needed to get one direct, like at one point. So okay. I could feel legit because... Yeah, it feels good to make a little bit of money, you know, but I was like, it's going to feel so good when Nylock went up directly. Yeah. I'm going to feel so proud. You want to go from A to Z, from a to start Z, to close. I sent the yeah. message. I went to the meeting. Mm-hmm. I closed it and I sold it. Like, it's going to feel so amazing. It took me about a year, year and a half. It's not like, oh, he just did it. No. Wait, 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 wait. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen right? overnight. Okay. Uh, it took me a year and a half, two years. Okay. Uh, after for the going direct to seller. Direct to seller. After I met you, mm-hmm. it took so, me like another six months or another year after almost, that, almost a year, where I couldn't be direct to seller. But in the meantime, you were co-host. In the meantime, we had a lot of friends, and yeah. I ate some because all our family comes from like fix and flipping background. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. they do that for other people. So I'm like, hey, why don't you get one? And you do it for you. And so we're like, here you go, five here, ten here. Yeah, there you go. You know, like we were charging them too. Mm-hmm. Because I had the realtor mentality, so you have to pay me for my realtor services. Yeah. So gotcha. then the guy was paying me for this letter, and I was, you know, I was getting paid twice. Like they were going to write me a check. Thank you for, for finding this one for me. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> crazy okay. Part, I was surviving. Crazy part, at that time, it, it was so sh- uh, stressful because we were, I mean, uh, biting our nails every month. We didn't have any money. Like it was, it was, he was sinking so much money into his wholesale side, mm-hmm. which is is leaving us broke every week. We, we, had, we had like no All the money. Marketing. He had mm-hmm. a, he was applying for credit cards like every week. A new credit card showed up to pay for his cold callers or per pay for Ooh, something new. Scary, man. So I told this guy, hey man, we're gonna we're gonna go under. So I mean we'll <laughs> both we're like Titanic. We're yeah. both with our yeah. kids. Scary. I said, screw it, we're both, I guess we're going under. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not gonna do a real estate stuff. But then I started noticing he's trying to close these guys over the phone and he's not able to. They want retail. They all want retail. And then I tell him, bro, can you just give me a couple listings yeah, to survive man yep. to survive. Turn these guys into listings. i told him I, like right. i'm late on all my yeah, payments yeah. on everything so was he so he's he like concentrated one week i think he's got listings. me about like 10 to 12 listings in one week and in the next two months he was getting me at least 10 listings a month yep. 10 listings a month for you were on the phones remote yeah. remote. 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 For the next four months i was getting 10 to 12 listings every month and then he was like hey any of those listings closing and he was this because he needed to pay more stuff right. to co-callers. It's <laughs> like a junkie, right? He needs more money to feed the, 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 the But that's but that's what pit. that's what people have to understand. When you're getting started and you don't have much money, you got you have to take what you have yeah. in order to continue to work Change that. Change pitch to eat. You got that's yeah. right. You and, you have to keep you know, doing that. Is it because this wasn't working? So I changed my pitch when I was going to approach sellers. It was more of a consulting pitch. Listen, I'm not here to sway you one way or another. These are your options. You pick. Either I help you sell it traditionally, 
or I help you get the cash offer, whichever one works for you. You mm -hmm. know what? You're not in a rush. You want top dollar. It sounds like this other option of listing would be the best benefit yep. for you. Mm -hmm. Do you want us, you know, to get this process going and get you? Yeah, I was doing that like ten. So times. We're doing like a ten listing of, machine at that moment. Instead of being an amazing wholesaler, I I had a listing, listing machine. machine. He created a listing machine, which. But this this is the crazy part. We knew that we just needed enough money to just feed it so that he could learn it, like mm -hmm. how to do it legitimately. Eventually, uh, we learn, learn how to So wholesale. eventually, uh, we got our big break with some big deals. Mm -hmm. And they were like, okay, let that whole traditional side go for now because we, we now we can go on our own steam there. And so he started investing heavily on what was uh, the co colors. I think he had 30 at some point. Yeah. We were going texting. We were texting maybe 50,000 to 100,000 people a week. Well, so, so let, me, let me jump in here. So, yeah. So going, so it sounds like you're, you guys are very resourceful, uh -huh. right? You know, you put in the work ethic. So, mm -hmm. but was there, along with that work ethic and, and busting your butt and finding new ways of making things happen, was there any like education, like besides the, you know, the little course I had, like Absolutely. what kind of coaching mentoring behind that? Was there any? Like, yeah. You guys yeah. are growing, you, you grew fast. Absolutely. So, so we, we, we took every course there is. Okay. Every single thing, the AZ RIA, it was amazing mm -hmm. for us. Like that's the first place that we went to the mm -hmm. moment i got my license that week we went to the at the, the celebrity, celebrity. Yes, yep, yep. we were there the first time and it was like amazing mm -hmm. to submerge ourselves into the world and everybody's like amazing walking around i'm like <laughs> God, it was so awesome. i think that's the first time i heard about online auctions like yeah. there's some guy there talking about the online yeah. auctions and all okay. that stuff so that was huge deals. that was huge but the thing is this yeah we made a hundred thousand that one month by that grace of god happening yep. but we were investing it all back in and just because we're investing, it doesn't mean we're getting our money back. Right. It was right. all it was all gone. Like we would spend five thousand here, ten thousand on on skipping, ten thousand on the colors, then another ten thousand, and it was just disappearing in the rent. Everything living felt like Russian roulette for me because I'm more conservative. I'm like, hey, I got. I can tell. I see the dynamic. <laughs> but the thing is that I'm willing to just. I, I'm gonna. I, in my mind, I'm like eight fifty fifty. So I'm yep. not. I'm not post. I'm not gonna back down. Mm -hmm. But I know that this isn't for me at that moment. I was. I was thinking. So I know we all, were down like to, I think he only had like 30 grand that okay. came in. Yeah. And I don't know where he comes again. He's like, hey, man, we're going to, we're going to Alabama. <laughs> There's this event. They're charging me like 10 grand per guy or something, something crazy like that. I'm, and I said to myself, look, you don't have to take me, bro. Like you just go on your own. Yeah. You get the information and bring it back because you have to save money. But his mentality started, I started noticing his mentality. And then uh, I started uh, seeing why was the reason that we're being successful. So his mentality was, he told me, bro, I need to, I need for you to go with me because if this is our only shot, I don't want to miss something out that they might teach mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. Like if I miss something from the, their presentation and you're able to catch it, like True. I, I right. don't want to pay yeah. this money 10 grand for no reason. So we both went, he got a lot of points on his side. I took a lot of pictures. I, I, I had a different presentation than he did. It was weird. Okay. Got uh, it. Me having a different mindset and had a different mindset. He picked up other things that, that I couldn't pick up, but. That was great doing that. That's awesome. It helps Sweet, man. So let me ask you guys, how important is partnership? Because Ramon, it sounds like you could have did it on your own, but you didn't want to. And then it sounds like Rodrigo, you could have went in a totally different direction, but you still kind of went back to Ramon. So how important is partnership? So, I mean, I think it's a, it's really life by design. You know, we've always been partners at everything. Like we used to play in a band for mm -hmm. like 20 years, playing a okay. band everywhere, travel the country. We're always being in a stage together and all that. And, and then we became adults and then we went our separate ways into the corporate world. Yeah. And then we knew like one day, wouldn't it be cool if we worked together on something yeah. like mm -hmm. back in the day with the band, you know, and we started aligning all of our moves to, to make that happen. That's why he was trying to get into real estate. Yeah. And slowly we started pushing, started pushing, you know, and eventually we got our cousin who was also in the band to work with us in the office, <laughs> okay. in the office and be extremely well. successful. Yeah, that's great, man. Like, you know, like before, it was like we we hoped we, we would make $1,500 a month playing in the band to pay our bills. Wow. You know, and like this guy, his first week, my cousin, when he started with it, he made like 20 grand. His first week. So, yeah. so you guys are running pretty hard. You said that you had 30 cold callers. Yeah. Wow. So, so what's, so what's your business look like today? Yeah. So, so right now we have 20 cold callers, right? We, okay. It's because it's because you, you have to trial and error everything. Like how much, what, what more productivity do I get at a 30 versus 20? And then we scale it down. What's the difference between 20 and 10? And nobody's going to tell you. And if they do, 
you know, it's hard because of different markets. Yeah. So we started scaling it and changing it. And we found out that the sweet spot for a good rhythm is about 20. And they're all calling here in the Valley. They're all just here in Arizona. They're at, uh, we pay four bucks an hour. The reason okay. being oh, Panama, we like their time frame. Like if they're yeah. somewhere else, like in, in okay. Thailand or somewhere yeah. where the time frame is inaccurate. And they're bilingual. And they're yeah. bilingual. And then the, the accent helps because this is a Hispanic, Hispanic. You know, market. Mm -hmm. So immediately once they call someone, if they sense that you have an accent, they'll switch it up in Spanish. Got like, it. oh, hey, uh, you need an offer for your house. Mm -hmm. Oh, not right, not right now. Or, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, so they change it. Yeah. So that so, helped us a lot. That's, that seemed to work for us, man. Uh, we, have a, we have two offices. We have one on the West Valley, Maryville, where our acquisitions is housed out of. Uh, okay. We have seven acquisitions. So you have country. 20 cold calls in Panama, calls acquisitions in Panama. here in town. Yep, we have about seven acquisitions. Seven. We call them MI6. Yeah, okay. And they're like, why? At the beginning, they were kind of looking at us weird. I'm like, MI6, or what? it's like the CIA of England, bro. Like, yeah. you, you, yeah. you have to be a bad, yeah. you know, like to be called MI6. So we're like, yeah, we're, of, we're trained snipers. There's a bunch of young guys there at the event. Bunch of young guys yeah, 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 they're cool. Yeah, they're nice guys. Yeah. So they're out of that office. I mean, they pretty much run that. Like, I don't really get involved unless I just look at the leads. Like, how many leads are we getting per week, per month? So they lock up the deal. They lock up the deal. They send it over. It seems like you guys do dispo at your office. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have our office where we do the dispo. Okay. We do the podcast. Now we're trying to do coordinate the events, more strategic. Okay. That little office is more like more, uh, you know, management moves. Like, what do we do? And fun. And also about the, the team aspect of it, how yeah. our, uh, the partnership works. It's like we don't really have a, a hey, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. What I look for on my side is what spots are is he not filling in that I have to go in and cover? cover. So it's, it's like a like a bike, right, or, or a car. You know, you might be the engine, you need the tires, you need this, but I can't be doing the same thing that he does. Like I can, right? Like yeah. he went on vacation and he's like, hey, you're going to cover for me. Now you're you're the guy doing all the, the stuff. So it's funny because he went on vacation and then I started running the office. Like deals came in and all that stuff came in. But at the end of the day, my spot was empty. You know, I do yeah. a lot of the the the, the analytics, you know, mm -hmm. figure out what we're going to do with the with our sales and all that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just covering whatever he's not doing. Got and, it. and that's a good, good teamwork. Yeah, it's the same agree. thing. Like I try to make them do a call once when we were first strat like starting to realize what roles we were each gonna play. And he's like, I am not. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't like it. I'm not gonna pick up that phone. Yeah. If, if you see Messi, like I, don't get me to kick the ball. Yeah, we yeah. know you're gonna kick better than me. So being, yeah, sure. being a wholesaler, I can definitely yeah. see the dynamic as you're the guy that's in the field that's you know working with the sales team and everything like that. And Rodrigo, you're behind the scenes strategizing, yeah. putting things together, looking at the analytics in the day. And, yeah, and you both have to pull yep. your own way. There's no such thing as a free ride in our free office. Check, no. Every seat. Uh, it's super valuable. Like gotta each, produce each, those. You gotta pay for your seat every day because since it's a, when you're in a small company, you can't hide. Yeah, you're yeah. not gonna hide behind 100 people or 30 or 40 people. You're seeing your production on a daily basis, hourly basis, on a weekly basis. Yeah. we know what's going on. At the end of the day, you know every person in any smaller way. And you know sometimes when we feel like I'm doing a lot, or and I feel like so he might be slagging, he'll pick it up or something and. Boom, have a huge, crazy week. Boom, here you go, $50,000 so, into the pipeline. So, so talking about your pipeline, so you got the sales office, you got the dispo office. How many get, how many deals roughly a month? Are you so year to day, we're, we're about 118 deals for the year. Love it, man. So, and that's up eight, about about 19 deals from last year. Great. From the whole, whole last year. Yeah. From the whole, yeah, from last, all last year. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's very important as well. Like keep track of mm -hmm. that. Because you need to know how you're looking. In our Podio system, we have last year's stats versus this year's stats, and we're tracking the revenue. Did we already surpass last year's revenue? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. We did. Woo! And we still got a couple months to go. Great. Did we surpass the the amount of deals? Cool. All right. Well, where did the deals come from? We have a bucket. Did they come from realtors? Did they come from the wholesaling machine? Mm -hmm. Did they come from family and friends? Mm -hmm. You know, did they come from Facebook? And we need to know what, and okay, well, what's the revenue for each one of those buckets? What's your best one? And we got to know which one, you know. Where uh, should we be putting all our attention to? Our um, attention to? Best bucket. Best bucket, I would say, realtors, bro. Realtors. realtors, awesome. Realtors is the best bucket, I ain't got to lie. Because, I mean, yeah, you, you get things from all the buckets. When you work with realtors and you have good relationships, you know, and they send you things, a lot of times they might be, you know, a little bit more spread with the realtors because they already have the person ready to go. Yep. And they're signed, you know, they're, they're on board, they have the price. And since we have 
like some really good buyers, some, a lot of end buyers who work with a lot of realtors as well. Like we'll send them deals that are close to market value, but because their buyer might be cash or might be this, they're able to sell them properties. And then the realtors make a lot of money too. Yeah. So it's like a like a, a good little puzzle that once once you have solved the right players in the right place. I think that's, that's where I came in. Like for him, he would have some deals, but he would just sell them. Hey, I put my fee five thousand dollars. These fees were fairly small. Yeah. Um, also, sure. but what happened when I came into the picture? My first three years was working with the Hispanic community. I was at that, you know, 40th Street in Washington, you know, mm-hmm. that uh, swap meet place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was the guy, you know, speaking with all Hispanics. Hey, you want to buy a house? And and being in Arizona and Phoenix, there's a lot of undocumented people, right? So mm-hmm. they can't buy with the traditional loan. They right. have a social. So I got deep with that, helping them how to buy how to buy uh, properties with a hard money loan. Great. So when he started getting these wholesale deals, in my mind, I'm like, hey, I have all these these buyers from all these relationships yep. I've made with lenders and realtors. That want to buy at a discount because they don't mm-hmm. want full retail because it's hard money loans. I started and mm-hmm. they all have 30, 40, 50,000 down. So, what started happening is uh, we started selling all these deals higher than normal, almost at full retail. So, after he got his stuff together with his stuff, and by the way, a lot of people were upset. How is this a deal? It is for me to like, work about yeah. selling. <laughs> how, how is this a deal? But we would have yeah. like an end buyer that wanted to live in that house and brought <laughs> right. it that I was giving him a 20K or 30K discount yeah. from his yeah. neighbor mm-hmm. that bought it for retail. Yeah. So I think word spread out. I, it was last year, yeah. January, before that. Hey, these guys always have these fat assignments on there. Mm-hmm. So, hey, can you guys dispo this thing for us? Can you guys sell this deal for us? And then we would notice that they would send them to us higher than then they would send it to other people. Put it, yeah, put it out well, there. Well, that's one thing that we challenged people on. Yeah. So we wanted to grow our relationships with other wholesalers. So we were like, we were bold. We're like, hey, man, listen, if you have a deal, send it to everyone who you normally send it to. It's all good. We don't want to be exclusive. Add an extra five to our price. You know, let us yeah. earn your right. business. Like, let, make an extra five for me. And if I can sell it, give me a shot. Like, you made more money. Everybody's right. happy. But then they started sending them to us like way more lots, lots of people saw it as like magic or something. But that's when we realized the end buyer is the one that's going to pay you more. So from there, we just started focusing on our small list of 20 people now grew to maybe 600 end buyers that are, are actively looking. And these are, you know, they, they're on a hard money. They, they can't really yeah. get qualified. But uh, that, that's the reason why we were able to sell deals a little bit more they're, expensive. So they're basically traditional buyers mm-hmm. that's just going a hard money route hard money in order route. to qualify for the loan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the business today, I mean, I would say dispo and selling deals and all that is pretty huge. It's at least 50% of the business. But also, you know, we do have the wholesaling side to complement for the months that are slow. You know, you might have a slower month, but then all of a sudden the, the wholesale side picked up three, four up. extra okay. deals wow. and it makes up. Or, you know, none of those happen, but we have a couple of flips that we're making, you know, 30, 40 in, you know, so that saves a month. So there's always something, yeah, you know, balancing. And then all of a sudden, let's say all three things go well, then we have a crazy 300K month like we did a few months back. Yeah. So, well, let me, let me yeah. ask you guys this before we, before we take a brief break. So you guys are doing the cold calling, working relationships and everything like that. You got 30 cold callers that you're working it's primarily in this market. Do you ever run out of, leads to call no i don't think so there's so many there's so many leads well we 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 keep changing them up we there's always niche lists that we will pick up and the thing is like by the time we're close to running out even if it's like four or five months for us to run out like those four or five months something might have changed and then it just goes back and go back okay and then we've gotten deals a year out where a lady literally told us you guys called me 12 months ago and I told you guys to F off. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden we're buying our deal a year later. But and then but now you guys called me again. And guess what? I need to move back to New York with my family. Yeah. So you call me at the right time. So it's okay. all about timing. So even if at six months we start running out of data, like it'll just recycle back and then hit up those people. Because a lot of things could happen in six months. Yeah. COVID, who saw that coming? You know, like all these different things that are going on in the country. People trying to move to Canada, move to, you know, there's so many things that happen in six months. So even just recycling is fine. Like we never, we never change the list. We try to. When's, when's the last time we changed the list? I mean, did we, did well, we skip happened, like all of Maricopa? What happens, uh, well, we have mainly all of Maricopa, you might yeah. say. But what I try to do, since I'm the one, you know, I usually I'll skip ten thousand a month of areas that I find that are very niche for us. So let's say we have a lot of buyers buying in a certain zip code. 
So I'll just get that whole zip code, re-skip that area, and then just dump it in our in our Zen call. Okay. So it's it's about just refreshing the areas where people are actually buying. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Let's hear a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back with uh, Ramon and Rodrigo. This episode of the Azria Show is brought to you by Azria Business Associate, Zona Law Group. Zona Law Group handles numerous real estate matters with a focus on landlord-tenant law in Arizona. For more information, visit their site at zona.law. Here's a quick update on Azria's upcoming events. On Tuesday, October 26th, is the Phoenix Real Estate Club networking meeting. On Wednesday, October 27th, is the Fix and Flip subgroup meeting. Also on Wednesday, October 27th, is the Finance Your Own Deals with Private Family Banking Systems Education Session. On Monday, November 1st, is the Tucson New Investors subgroup. On Tuesday, November 2nd, is the Prescott subgroup. And on Thursday, November 4th, is our Income Property Owners subgroup. For more information and to register, visit azria.org slash count. Okay. We're back with Ramon and Rodrigo Martinez, who are big wholesalers here in the Valley. And we were just asking them some questions about wholesaling. But you guys do have an event that's coming up here pretty quickly. Kind of share with us the event. What are you guys doing? What are you guys talking about? Absolutely, man. So so this is this is kind of an interesting story. Our plan a few months back was to, to create a small little gathering, you know, a couple hundred people. And we're like, okay, well, let's have a couple hundred people event. And next thing you know, reg- we open up registrations, and you know, a few a few days out after registration, we had over 400 people registered. So our little hall wasn't going to suffice. So we're like, let's still pack them in there anyway. So we'll make mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But then, as time was passing by, like it grew to 600, 700, 800, 900. Hey, I'm flying in from New York. Hey, I'm flying in from Chicago. Hey, I'm flying from LA. I'm flying in from Charlotte. You know, like a thousand. Like we hit 1,100, 1,200 by the time the event got around. Wow. And so by that time, but the moment we hit 700, we're like, we need to upgrade venues. Like, we can't mm-hmm. fit yeah, we're 700 right. people to 150 people. Arena. Yeah, it's yeah. Really stressful. We, the fact, 400, <laughs> we, we didn't have an arena. We're thinking we we're going to use the conference. Yeah, room. the conference. And, <laughs> and as he kept telling me every day, hey, now we have 500, all excited. So we're, they're not going to fit. What are we going to do? Yeah. So he had me looking for these uh, quinceanera balls, like the hall room mm-hmm. in, yeah. in mid Maryville for like for the weddings, style. weddings <laughs> or Swiss 16 places. So at the end of the day, he found out uh, the, the Sheraton. Well, we didn't feel it was going to be professional enough in a yep. quinceanera mm-hmm. hall. You know, like, very good. So we're like, hey, like, it's not the image we want to give. So we ended up upgrading to that. And first of all, the day the event came, we were standing there. We're like, what if we were, what if we were like hacked and somebody to play a prank on us, <laughs> signed up a thousand people <laughs> under fake emails. And like everything was going through our mind because it, it wasn't the beginning. Right. Nobody was there. And we're like sweating, like, oh my God, it's an hour to go. Nobody Are people going to show up? A we're standing people. there with our banners, looking all professional. What if it was a prank? What? We're going crazy. All of a sudden, the elevator doors open, and people just started pouring in. Yeah. Oh, nice. Boom, boom, boom. So they started coming in, coming in. And all of a sudden, that, that little middle foyer, it was packed. Right. And we opened the massive doors, and the whole thing just got packed and full. And next thing you know, it, we had close to a thousand people, I would say, in that little area. Wow. And it was like just incredible. So the next day after the event, we said, what if it was a fluke? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> We're always questioning ourselves. Yeah, right. What yeah, if it was like one of those things where, you know, what if it was a, some sort of error by the gods and, you know, maybe it doesn't happen again? You know, like, so the next day I, I announced an event again. I said, okay, hey, thank you guys for showing up. We're doing another one. I just put a date, you know, tentatively, uh, October 25th. Got it. Okay, here's registrations. Go. I just, open up another 500 spot just to see what happened, right? The next, next thing you know, within two, three days, all 500 seats were registered. And this is for an upcoming for this upcoming event, October, October 23rd. Okay. okay. After okay. three days. So I was like, oh my God, I think it's going to happen again. And now, so close to the Saturday, October 23rd, we already have about a, almost 1,100 people signed up. Okay. Wow. So, this, so, so it's this, it's October 23rd, October 23rd at the Sheridan Downtown Phoenix. Yep. And you can go to Wholesale Sharks presents.com uh, yeah. wholesale sharks present like single present one. okay yeah, yeah. so wholesale sharks plural okay. with the s but presents single present one. without an s yep, yep. okay absolutely or they could just pull it up on on instagram wholesale sharks yeah you know, okay it's, it's on there but the, the the crazy thing about that event is that i think it went viral after the event went down because we had a crazy entrance with a, a banda for people that know yep. 
like Mexican music. A banda is like a, a orchestra of Mexican I saw that. trombones and things. Mm-hmm. And so, so we, so first of all, we didn't think people were going to show up, right? But we knew a lot of our relatives were going to show up, and a lot of our friends and family right. were Mexican. <laughs> and since we had the idea about the the wedding hall, and it, when you get married in Mexico, when you enter the wedding hall. You enter with the banda behind right. you, yeah. the, the, the husband and wife. Okay. So we're like, let's hire a banda and feel like we got married. And, and it's, well, it's, it's like every uh, boxing match as well. Like for us Mexicans, uh-huh. you you would see like Canelo or somebody fight, and then they mm-hmm. have the, the band back in the mob right. you so know, representing. Is it going down again? Or so so the thing is, we did that at the event. We came up and people were going crazy. You know, there's a lot of things on TikTok about. Yeah. Tell me you're at a Mexican real estate event without telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, and it started going viral. Love it. So now we have so, a crazy, crazy Mexican celebrity okay. joining us for our entrance. I don't, ah, I don't okay. spoiler okay. alert okay. it. Okay. But if you loved our previous entrance, we actually got a celebrity. Like okay. celebrity, celebrity, celebrity singer. Oh, All right. Mexican celebrity singer. Putting on like a song. With or... our intro. Uh, we're going to walk in with the me- okay. famous, famous guy. Okay. Everybody knows this guy. If you're Mexican, you know. Yeah. Well, All right. So, so that's wholesale so shots. You don't want to miss that one. That's yeah. Scary. That's so, going to be legendary. So you must be charging a lot for this. No. no you would imagine, but we're actually is, uh, doing this for uh, the amount of free 99. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so free. Free. Completely free. Absolutely awesome. free. You, can see, you don't see that much. That's I love. Well, that. I mean, you know, with the huge lineup that we have, you know, who, we who is on it? Have, yeah, what can we expect? So, so we have a guy by the name of Pace Morby. For mm-hmm. those people in real estate, definitely know who this guy is. He just got his new show, Flip Me on A and E. Yeah, mm-hmm. very popular show. So we're very happy that he was able to join us for this. We also have Alex Signs mm-hmm. from the All In Entrepreneurs as well. Great guy. We also have Max Jimenez from the Real Estate Disruptors as well joining us. We have Lauren Hardy as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. This mom flips. This mom flips. Uh, she's she's amazing. She's yeah. so smart. We have Rafael Cortez as well. That guy, he's deadly. Like that guy has fire. He's got heat. Mm-hmm. He's very smart. He's got two PhDs in psychology. Like, this guy <laughs> is sharp, man. And then we also, I mean, we also have Elijah Rubin mm-hmm. as well. Okay. Great guy, the fire damage king. Awesome. Uh, as well on this, we're gonna have a couple of surprise, surprise guest speakers guests. as well. Yeah. Of course, Rodrigo, my brother. Okay. He's, doing, he's talking about his experience with the realtors and all that, the company, the dispo side and all that. But we have a couple of surprise guest speakers as well. Right. When when they go up on stage at the end, people's minds are going to be blown. They'll be like, oh my God, what are these guys doing? <laughs> so so I always like to keep it interesting. No, it's great, man. It starts at noon. We're going to have a couple, about an hour, hour and a half for networking mm-hmm. you know, before the event. Uh, it's going to run for maybe three to four hours, not too long. you know. And then from there, we're going to have to do a little networking session again outside. People can grab drinks after the event because at the end of the day, your network is your net worth, is what yep. I say. Um, if I hadn't met Mike, mm-hmm. you know, if I hadn't made, met other people that have been, you know, key to our success, I mean, we wouldn't be here. Right. I think that definitely helps quite a bit to meet the right people. Right. You meet the wrong people, they'll tell you, they'll take you down the wrong yeah, path the wrong of path. no money and no prosperity. <laughs> you meet the right people that inspire you and keep pushing you. I see Mike's videos all the time and he keeps going, and I'm just like, oh my God, I need to like get off Mike. <laughs> but do something like you need to be around people that motivate you, man. But I want to thank AZ Ria for, for uh, being you, one man. of our sponsors. Yeah, we'll be yeah, there. You guys are definitely we'll the elite, elite sponsors at our event. And, and, you know, you guys definitely fit with our core values of mm-hmm. education and helping the community and guiding people in the right direction. I mean, you guys give so much information out. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, I think it's almost impossible for somebody not to make it this day and age with so many resources like you guys. That if somebody's not guys. making it, I mean, <laughs> yeah. what else do you want? Do you, <laughs> you have people yeah. that have taught people like us yeah. how to do things, offering right. their services. And, and <laughs> I mean, if there's anything you're going to take away from this, because you guys dropped a lot of great information, a lot of great tips, is leaning into it. Like you guys, you know, they always say lean into it. Even if you don't know what's going on, you're a little nervous. You guys leaned into it. You guys just took oh. that step and you made it work yep. oh. all the way through, man. So I love what you guys appreciate it. And, and even yeah. if you don't know what something's about, like they say success leaves clues, right? Oh, yeah. Well, guess what? I always have my eyes open. I see what people are doing, right? Oh, podcast. Let me do a podcast. I don't know why I'm doing a podcast, but here, yep. let's do a yep. podcast. <laughs> that, those guys are doing a huge event. Well, let me do an event. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't ever do something knowing what's gonna come from it. Hell, we were talking about our first event. I didn't plug anything in. Yeah. Like, I was uh-huh. probably the only person that didn't offer a service or a, <laughs> or something, you know, like, how can you work with it? Like, I was so panicked that I, we were in this massive event. 
I forgot to plug anything. I <laughs> shut up and left. Let's plug yourselves right now. How are they going to get a hold of you, Ramon, and then Rodrigo? How are we get so in touch for with mine, you? mine, it's uh, Rodrigo Disco Sharks uh, Instagram. Yeah, awesome. so for me, it's a wholesale sharks, wholesale sharks on Instagram. But, but like you said, lean into it. Yeah. You know, we didn't waste a second. Like you figured we would have waited a day to mm-hmm. announce the next event. I woke up that morning after the event. Here's the next one. Great. You know, like I did, and and I still don't know. You know, like we're still developing. The people are there. You know, like we have a good following. Now we have a lot of other you know people coming to us and trying to collaborate on things. And guess what? I don't know why I'm doing it, but guess what? I'm learning. Yeah, I'm yeah. learning as I'm going. I know that it's helping people. People are benefiting from it. And, you know, a guy said, you know, I think it was uh, Shaq. If whatever I'm doing benefits people, you know, then that I'm just going to keep doing it. And Go something on. will come from it eventually. Sure. Yeah. Right? So okay. that's what we're doing right now. We're just trying to figure out the dynamics of the event, how to, how to make it work for everyone so we can keep it free. Okay. You know, okay. These things are expensive. But, but at the end of the day, we have the right thought in mind, which is help out our give. community, yep. give back, and, you know, like the rest will sort itself out. Perfect, Look perfect. That note, that was a great way yep. to end it. So guys, Ramon, Rodrigo, Martinez, thank you so much for being thank here, being a blessing to us, being yeah. a blessing to the listeners of the Azaria Show. It's an honor, man. Like, honestly, sincerely, it's an honor. Like, this was my first thing that I went to, man. So for us <laughs> to be here right now, it like, gives me chills. Like, I'm truly grateful. <laughs> It's like a dream come true, man. My whole life right. is a dream come true. Like, <laughs> okay. Lean into it, get it. All right, guys, here in Arizona, you know what to do. Go to asria.org if you want more information about Asria and the services that we provide and offer to newer real estate investors, seasoned investors. We have tons of information out there. So go to asria.org. And on that note, Mike, we're going to sign off. Yep. Take it easy. All right. See you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for listening to The Azria Show with your hosts, Marcus Maloney and Mike Delpreet. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you found this information valuable, head over to azria.org and learn more about our community.